The triangulation view is one of RootsFinder's most powerful tools for helping you grow your family tree. It's important to understand that a true triangulation is based on chromosome segment data inherited from a mutual ancestor. If I use a diagram to interpret this, I'd put myself here as a dot. Now I make a dot and draw a line to a known cousin. We have the exact same segment data. Now another third relative is over here on the other side of the triangle with the exact same data. Because we all match on the same chromosome segment, we could pair family trees and see that we are related. It diagrams out like a triangle and is therefore called triangulation. This is key to interpreting my DNA results. However, sometimes the word triangulation is used more loosely to describe a group of people who are probably related to one another on different chromosomes. Instead of triangulated matches, some companies provide in common with or ICW matches. In contrast with triangulated matches, where the matches are required to share the same chromosome segment and region, in common with matches simply share DNA somewhere. If I share DNA with one person on one chromosome, another person on another chromosome, and they share DNA on a third chromosome, those two matches would be in common with, but not triangulated. The result is that in common with matches can result in a lot more false matches because it's easy to assume we all share the same common ancestor, but maybe we don't. We need to be more careful with the in common with groups. So it's important to understand whether you're getting ICW or triangulation from your DNA test provider. I'm switching back to my ancestry kit here to show you that even though I wasn't able to import my segment view data directly from ancestry, I can still use triangulation to identify what I want to know and then do my research. Ancestry exports in common with matches instead of triangulated segment matches. So the matches won't necessarily be on the same chromosome segments, but I can still use this information to start figuring out relationships. Each of these dots called nodes is a kit from my match list. The lines show connections between kits. I can see little splashes of color here and there because these are the people I matched to my tree earlier. I could dive right in and start clicking around, maybe pull out a cluster by dragging it out like this, but fortunately there's a more productive way to interpret this. First, I'm going to apply a centimorgan filter. The unit of measurement for a chromosome data is a centimorgan, abbreviated as CM. You start with a 50% inheritance from a parent, which gives you an average of about 3,400 centimorgans. That number of centimorgans gets sliced in about half each time a new bloodline is introduced, so your total number of shared centimorgans decreases. At about 7 centimorgans, the amount of shared inheritance is so small that you can't rely on it to define your mutual ancestry. This chart from Blaine Bettinger illustrates the average total centimorgans you can estimate for a given relationship. As genealogists, we always start with what we know and work towards the unknown. So I should start with my closest and known relationships first, then use them to figure out what I don't know. So I'm going to say I want to start with maybe just my first cousins once removed, which according to the chart would be about 500 centimorgans. That brings my view down to just four people, and I know who they all are. That was too easy. So let's say now I'm willing to expand that range to include second cousins and bring the total number of shared centimorgans down to 200. That would give me 26 kits to work with, which is much more manageable. Let's take Kate Blanche B here. I knew that our mutual ancestor was on my mom's side, so she's yellow. Now everyone connected to her in our triangulation is probably also related to me through that line. That's where we got our genetic signature. I can turn off the stuff clouding the view by applying a filter that includes only matches within one degree of separation to her. So now I can start digging in on these unknowns to color code them and start placing all these DNA matches in their respective place in my tree. And then I can use this information to grow my tree. Another thing I can do is use the fan chart filter to select exact locations in my tree where I want to focus. Since Kate was on my mom's side, I click on the fan chart to select our mutual ancestor over here in my tree, 
And now everyone I've tagged as related to me through this part of our tree shows up with their related kits. If I go back and click again, now the ancestors of that person are selected as well. So I can include known connections further back in time on this same line, so to speak. Now I can really hone in on these to interpret my results. At what point did we share an ancestor? What information might these people have that I don't have? What hints are available? What have I already done? I have a good foundation to work from now because I've interpreted my DNA results to say we're probably related at this point in my family tree. Now I can continue to add documentation right here in Roots Finder and continue researching this line.